we were liberated in the concentration camp of Buchenwald, Germany. Ending almost six years of World War II and surviving 50 years later, April 11, 95, as chief rabbi of Israel and survivor of Buchenwald, I was asked to go to Buchenwald, which is a suburb of the city Weimar, the city of culture in Germany. In the National Theater of Weimar, there was a commemoration and in gathering from all the world, Buchenwald survivors who made it 50 years later, they are still alive and can make this way to Weimar, to Buchenwald, 50 years later. Among them, there were three Nobel Prize winners, Jews and some non-Jews. And I had to speak. But I told them there is no way to go back from Weimar in the same day to Israel and I don't sleep in Germany. I cannot put my head on a pillow in Germany. I can go to lecture, to speak, to make all kinds of obligations. But to close my eyes, not there. So they made the arrangements, the president of Germany was waiting in a helicopter in the airport of Frankfurt, I arrived 9 o'clock in the morning from Tel Aviv, took me an hour and a half to Weimar, I went to the National Theatre to speak, then the helicopter brought me back to the airport of Frankfurt, I didn't even enter the city, and Al on his way back, 4 o'clock p.m., brought me home. 9 o'clock in the evening, I was in his way back. When I entered into the hall, the National Theater, I said to them, Dear friends, I am here, arriving to Buchenwald, second time in my life. But pay attention, what a difference. First time I arrived here, over 50 years ago, on Januar 45, not as a human being. I didn't have a name even, just a number. I was no more than a number. Heftling, which means in Germany, a prisoner, prisoner, seven and a half years old, prisoner. What a crime did I do? That I'm a new prisoner. Did you judge me in any court? Heftling Nummer 117030, prisoner number 117. This was my first visit to this place, a number. Fifty years later, I come today for the second visit. I have a name. I am the chief rabbi of the Jewish independent state Israel. I have a duty. I have a status. I am somebody, not a nobody. I was here nobody. Now I will represent something. The Jewish state, maybe even the Jewish people. So you can say that if such a difference happened, let's close the old chapter. Let's open a new one. Now you have it. an homeland, you have a state, you have a status, you have a name, you have a family. Let's forget what happened 
and start new life. So I came especially to tell you, there in Weimar, we will never forget, because we cannot forget, and we will never forgive, because we are not authorized to forgive. Who gave me the mandate to forgive? My father, whom you killed in Treblinka in the age of 50? My mother, whom you killed in Ravensbrück in the age of 44? My brother, whom you killed in the age of Bar Mitzvah, also in Treblinka? They ask me to forgive you? No, they didn't. I entered into the torture room in Buchenwald. You have it today. At the gate there is a shield made of iron, a kind of metal. Everyone to his destiny. means we cannot promise you anything. We cannot promise you your life. Everyone to his destiny. We are not responsible. Inside you enter, it exists till this very last day, the torture room and the crematoria. In the torture room, someone with his name made in the stone of the window probably before he died of torture. Five Hebrew letters. Nun, Kuf, Vav, Mem, Ayin. In Yiddish it means Nekume. Nekume in Hebrew, Nekama, which means revenge. This is the last will, Nekoma. He didn't permit me to forgive. He asked me to take revenge. So I came to tell you, we cannot forget, forget and we will not forgive. What is our revenge? What can we do as a revenge? To beat a German? To throw a stone? To shoot a bullet, I can't do it. I cannot. Many, many times that I thought in my imagination, if I will meet now a Nazi German, and I will know exactly that he was the one who shot my mother to death, what can I do? I'm afraid I'm too weak to do something. What can I do? Our revenge is our very existence, our flourishing, our state of Israel, the homeland, our communities. This morning when I came to the school, to the collegium, Hebrew, Sfaradi, and the children of the kindergarten welcomed me with flowers. And all the children in the elementary school said Baruch Haba, Baruch Abayim. And then I gave a lecture for the school from 13 to 18, some hundreds. I saw so many Jewish kids wearing the kippah and saying in Hebrew Baruch Haba. I said, this is our revenge. This is my Nekume. The most beautiful Nekume in the world. That we exist. Where are you? Where are we? What happened to your name? What is our reputation? We have a continuity. We are immortal. We exist. We survived. And we are so strong, and our Jewish identification is undoubtedly, and we do everything in order to keep it. And when I say we, you think that I mean the survivors of Buchenwald or other camps in 
the Holocaust. No. When I say we, I mean you as well. 